Okay, so I promised to try and push some other non-processing videos to the channel. Um, however, with the clock changes and clear nights, I'm trying to make the most of uh, the clear skies at the minute. So at the end of this video, you will see the final processed image of the M45 Pallades Open Cluster. And I have to admit that I feel it is my uh, best image yet. And hopefully you'll agree with this. And of course, if you disagree, please leave some constructive comments against this video so I can prove further. I think there's a number of reasons as to why uh, this image is good or um, an improvement on previous ones. Um, I feel more comfortable with my mount telescope setup um, from the balancing to the focusing to the plate solving for the acquisition and framing of each image. And although these, um, you know, making these videos and reading the comments and feedback, uh, I understand more on the processing side of Astro Pixel Processor for stacking and Star Tools for post processing. Um, so, really highlights what I love about astrophotography. There's a lot of small things to get right, but when you get them right and everything falls into place, it's really worth the effort. Anyways, onto the underlying uh, frames themselves. So I'll be using 190 light frames, each of a 30 second exposure. And uh, these were all taken with my usual ISO 400 on an unmodified Canon 800D DSLR attached to the uh, Skywatcher Evo Star 80 ED telescope. And that was attached uh, to the camera through a 0.8 reducer. So everything is unguided, um, but importantly, to counteract this, um, I feel I've got good polar alignment uh, via the HEQ5 mount. Everything's then stacked using Astro Pixel Processor. And then in this workflow, I'll be processing further and further in star tools and then a final tweak uh, in Photoshop. So I'm gonna jump straight into star tools um, and if you want to see how to stack via Astro Pixel Processor, then please review or view one of my earlier videos um, where I went through the Andromeda Galaxy, and that included a good section on stacking using Astro Pixel Processor. So per usual, um, we've loaded up Star Tools, and we're going to open the, um, the FITS file that Astro Pixel Processor has produced. Uh, so I'm just selecting this one here, open the file and the star tools. Um, and this is a result um, of the, the stacking and unstretched or unadjusted output, as I said, from Astro Pixel Processor. And remember, this is uh, really important um, that there's been no stretching or adjustments to that final stacked image. Um, as, that, as that's what uh, Star Tools is looking for, an uh, uh, untouched um, linear image. So anyway, this one's from a, a DSLR camera. So we'll select the middle option. Um, so it tells Star Tools what data set is within the, uh, the FITS image. And we're going to auto dev module first. Um, and this module replaces the usual histogram, curves, levels, et cetera, that we would see in the likes of GIMP or Photoshop. And rather than um, a curve, um, it, it actually looks and processes the characteristics of the data uh, and provides kind of a, a custom histogram unique to the data that's within the image uh, that we're working with. So, um, uh, Autodev um, highlights in the corners, as you can see on the edges, uh, the right hand side as well, um, the, the stacking artifact, artifacts that we need to work with um, and any kind of light pollution or gradients across the image. So don't actually change anything uh, this first time round, we'll just simply keep uh, the information. and. Before we um, start removing the problem areas that we've just viewed, um, we're going to use the bin module. And this allows us to trade off a reduction um, in the, the image resolution. Um, but with that trade off, we also reduce the noise uh, within the image. 
So we've got a, an image size of 3051 by 2114. Um, I'm going to reduce this down to about 45%. Uh, reduces the image size, but because of that, we actually reduce the noise as well within the image straight away, which is good. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that adjustment. And then we are going to crop the image. Once star tools, okay, so we're going to crop the, use the crop module. And we can draw, well not draw, but click and drag um, an area that we want to crop to. Or the other thing we can do is by using the sliders along the bottom, uh, select an area. And as you can see, I'm changing the X values, the left and the right. Uh, just increase that a little bit, a little bit more. And what I'm looking here is kind of, I'm not, I'm cutting off the, the artifacts to the side and the corners. Um, but also I'm conscious that I'm not, you know, cutting a star or something or, or um, an object of interest in half. Um, so it's a balance between making sure that we've got enough of the artifacts cut off, um, just minor adjustments here, but we are not losing any um, any details either. Okay. Um, also trying to keep the crosshair, the green crosshair in the center. So that helps with framing the image, making it look good or, or central and balanced. And we'll keep that crop. Now the next thing we need to do is um, obviously we've got a gradient, you know, in, from left to right, left being dark and across to the right being very, very light. And we're going to use um, the wipe module, which is very strong, but also helpful for this situation. And in this workflow, I'm going to use the vignetting um, presets. So click on that and down the bottom that's pre-populated. Um, the settings for us. Um, I'm going to increase the dark and nominally to about six. Okay. Um, and this helps find the darkest pixels uh, within the background and it, um, it, it sets a neutral background, uh, giving us a more solid background, which is remove, helps remove the gradients. Um, as you can see, probably remember hopefully in other videos like the Andromeda Galaxy, I masked out the galaxy. Um, but in this case, um, we're just going to do it across the entire image without a mask. Um, and this should be strong enough to remove the gradient and hopefully we'll see a, a more solid dark background in the sand. There we go. Okay. So that's looking there better and cleaner than where we were. So we'll keep this. And the wipe module um, that's impacted the, the dynamic range of data. And we're going to run develop module against this. Um, and what this allows us to do is make um, more use or bring out more data after we've wiped uh, the gradient out. So I'm still trying to work out and learn how to use the auto develop module a second time round. Um, and from comments based on my previous videos, that's an actual better way to do it a second time round. However, for the time being, um, I'm still comfortable within doing this manually. So the only area I touch here is this digital development um, slider. And this is just kind of like a, a you know, there, there's not much detail. If I go too high, it's overexposed. Um, so it's a case of finding a, a, a setting um, that we're comfortable enough that uh, doesn't overexpose the, the background. Um, so I'm going to set this to just a little bit slightly under um, one level higher. There we go. Okay. So I'm happy with that and we can see some nice uh, nebulosity and kind of um, trails coming through between the, the stars and the center here, which should look nice when we get to uh, the color module. 
Okay, so we're gonna uh, keep that. And that second develop has used um, that extra dynamic range of gap um, that the wipe module brought out for us. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the HDR module or the, the high dynamic range module. Um, and this is used to bring out um, hidden um, or, or use the hidden data even further um, within there. So we're going to use the reveal uh, core setting. So again, click on, on one of the top of the settings, automatically adjusts the bottom for us. Uh, I'm going to push the actual amount of detail that I want brought out to maximum. And I'm also going to increase the, the strength uh, of the algorithm, I suppose, or the calculations that go on within the processing on this module. Uh, so this one does take a, a few seconds or several seconds to process. And visually at the minute, there's not much difference. Um, so I'll not be using the before and after. However, in, in tests, when I've run through this before, um, the HDR module definitely has brought out uh, a bit more data that was hidden within the image. The reveal core option as well that I chose um, because we'll, you know, okay, this isn't a specific galaxy with a core, but it seems to treat the stars and the wisps around it um, kind of as a core, I suppose, um, and that, that improves those areas. So that's completed because we can see on the bottom right the the circle progress bar is finished so we're just going to keep on that and then we're going to move on to the decon or the deconvolution module um i'm going to auto generate a mask and this um module i guess processes the data uh, and it makes some slight adjustments um based on the, the, the data signals or the enhancements that have, made, have been made through the, the Star Tools process so far. Um, reading on the help files on this, the great thing about this module is that it seems to kind of um, auto-select the, or, or the, the settings are optimal for the, the noise and the detail that we've already got within the image. Um, so we've opened this, we've selected a, an auto-generated mask and we're just going to keep the results of this module. So we're going to move on to um, the color module um, where we'll start to see some, some blue within the, the nebulosity and the stars. Um, but I just want to give a, a shout out to one of the viewers on previous videos um, who added a comment to use the sample tool within the co color module. Um, and I found that that really, really has helped improve um, the colors within the images. So before I actually go into the color module, we want to set a star mask. So just go to mask, clear the current one, auto and then stars, undo. And this will create a, a, a mask just around the individual stars. And why we want to do that is because when we go into the color module, um, we want to sort of keep mask. We want to take a sample um, of those white stars. And that sets the, the white or the balanced, so that the white balance uh, based on the stars um, which, except for those large stars, as opposed, it should be the, the widest part of the image. So then what we do is we invert the mask. And this applies that um, balance or white balance through the sample across the entire image. This is my understanding. Um, and there, all of a sudden, we've now got within a few clicks. I haven't had to adjust any red, green, or blue by your settings themselves. And within a few clicks, we've got some nice colored stars in there and um, uh, certainly some nice blue wisps or nebulosity within the M45 itself. 
Okay, so um, I think those colors are looking good. I so just want to show here the, the star tools workflow. Um, you know, once you know which modules to go through, it is actually quite simple with just using the settings um, or the basic settings, sorry, the, the default settings. Um, so now what we're going to do the final module um, or the final step in here is we're going to remove the grain or the noise from the background. So to do that, we take off uh, the, the, the tracking and we choose grain removal. And then we're just going to slightly increase the, the strength of this and click next. And it'll process that and next step will ask us if we, we want to apply the changes to the mask that we had previously. Um, but instead, we're going to choose a full mask because we want to apply this to the entire image. And certain for so also, uh, yes, set the full mask. And then what we'll do is we'll do a before and after. So we can see the differences in the noise. Generally, it flashes three times with the mask. And if we zoom in a little bit, so that's the before with you know noise in the background certainly, and there's um, after with the, the noise has been kind of reduced or smoothed out. Um, which one we zoom back out um, looks very very nice. So we're going to keep um, the changes there, and finally we are going to save. Um, this image. So I'm just going to change this to MG M45 processed star tools and then we'll load this up into Photoshop for some very final few tweaks. Uh, but that's looking really good. Um, I'm impressed with that within star tools itself. Okay, so I've loaded the image into uh, Photoshop and um, the only changes or tweaks I'm going to do in here is I'm going to just quickly create um, a layer and check the levels. So generally at this point, there's not much to actually do within the level. So I've just created a, uh, a layer and then I'm pressing Command and L um, on the Mac. So it's obviously be different for Windows. Um, and I'm just checking the red, green, and blue levels to make sure that they're up to the edge. There's not much uh, other data um, in there we can pull out. Um, so there's nothing there we're going to adjust. So we'll just leave that as is. I'm going to create another layer and just call this make stars smaller. So we can call this layer whatever we want. Um, one of the things I've been finding um, really handy is this astronomy tools, um, which I'll link in the description below. And the one action that, uh, so this is kind of like um, a set of macros or a set of actions. Um, if I drop down there, you can see for make stars smaller, it'll actually run all of these actions as one for us. Um, so I get said, well, I'll place a link below in the description um, if you're interested in them. I'm just going to run this um, one action. Reduces the stars and we can turn on a before and after of the layer just to see it's taken a little bit um, of the intensity of the stars out, which is good. I'm going to create one more layer and run one more action. Contrast enhancement. Again, call that what we want. It's the actual action um, that's important. Uh, select the action and run it. And this just kind of like makes it pop out a little bit more, as I like to say. Um, and we can see the, the wisps now, um, or the nebulosity's got better use of the shadows. Uh, so if we turn that on, turn that off, um, it, it's really um selected i suppose you know left the stars alone 
and selected the middle for us. Um, and we can see that's made, a, in my opinion, a big difference for it popping out. Okay, so I think we'll leave that image as is. Um, you know, continue to work with this and improve it. Um, taking on any comments that anybody has, um, please leave them below. If you do like these workflows, if you do like these videos, then please hit subscribe, um, like the video, and hopefully I'll be working on some other videos that are not just image processing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about hardware in the future on the telescope itself and the mount. But other than that, thank you very much for um, taking the time to watch this. Thanks. <laughs>